In the aftermath of war, the possibilities seem limitless. It's a time for big ideas, the atomic revolution led by the University of California. And an equally promising defense electronics revolution centered in part around Stanford University. And then there is San Francisco Bay. No one has a bigger idea for it than John Reber. John Reber was a sort of self-taught engineer, and he comes right out of that long tradition of seeing nature only as something that can be used, exploited, turned into cash and credit, in fact. And so the bay for him, he felt that there was entirely too much bay. John Reber was not a professional engineer, but he had uh, done a lot of engineering research. He was actually a theatrical producer. With the war over, John Reber dusted off a plan formed in the previous decade. It called for nothing less than the end of San Francisco Bay as an estuary. In its place would arise a stunning new complex of fully integrated shipping facilities, a ring of strategically placed naval and air bases, and new highly efficient ground transportation corridors built atop two massive dams that would, at the same time, solve the problem of California's insatiable need for water for good. Which then could be used not only to encourage more urban and industrial growth around the bay, but also as a point of transshipment for water going down south to grow more city in Southern California as well, too. Let us face, without panic, the reality of our times, the fact that atom bombs may someday be dropped on our cities, and let us prepare for survival. He notes that, gee, this would be a great way to reshape the bay into a defensible piece of geography. We can get the army to and from the peninsula in a big hurry. We can get the public out of the coast and back inland in a big hurry. You know, this makes a lot of sense. And so from purely a logistical point of view, it does make sense. By 1950, Reber had created a national buzz over the future of San Francisco Bay. His bold initiative graced the pages of prominent publications and despite being dismissed by the Army and Navy, seized the imagination of members of Congress. That year, he convinced the Senate Public Works Committee to hold hearings in San Francisco. They had a hearing. He gave his presentation with his charts and his slides and his diagrams and his pounding the table, uh, what a great plan this would be and how many people it would employ and how it would save all that water and he persuaded the Congressional Committee then to recommend money for a permanent model of the Bay to be set up as a test for the Reber plant. Today, the San Francisco Bay model, a working scale model of the San Francisco estuary in Sausalito, stands as the one tangible legacy and the ultimate undoing of John Reber's big idea. The model showed that the Bay Delta estuary system would be destroyed. Freshwater dams would only create giant evaporation ponds, while the central bay would have been devastated by the loss of critical freshwater inflows. 